subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Winner finally got one here in the studio and in the box, I'm not gonna talk too much about it. It's the same old deal from the iPhones before it, but with the Product Red edition, you do get the Product Red thanking you for donating to Product Red. Figured why not, if we're gonna be buying iPhones, why not give a donation by buying the Product Red color? So you can see still with that weak charger, no fast charging here. I'd like to see fast charging in the next iteration of this device. You can see you do have your USB lightning headphones, no dongle, so if you wanna plug in 3.5 millimeter headset, you're not gonna be able to do that unless you buy yourself a dongle. I think it's like nine bucks. And you also have your lightning cable right there. Other than that, that's about it. You do get your Apple stickers, of course, with any new iPhone, if you wanna go troll, you know, with the Apple stickers. All right, so the first reason why the iPhone XR is a winner is because of its design. Its design is pretty much the same as an iPhone 10, 10s, or 10s Max, but it costs 750 bucks to start. So you get many different colors to customize to your liking as well. But I mean, if you didn't want to pay a thousand, but you wanted that premium future of the iPhone design, you're finally going to be able to get this at a much cheaper price. And I think many more people will be rocking the newer designed iPhone since the price has come down. Not only the price come down if you pay for it fully unlocked, if you do subsidize and you pay monthly plans at your carrier, the prices per month will come down as well. Now on the rear, you can see dual camera. You have a single camera here and on the sides, it's stainless steel versus aluminum. But one trait I like about the 10R is that it doesn't have those little slits for the antenna line. Now that's a small detail, but it's just for those design snobs who like everything uniform. The iPhone 10R looks just like the iPhone 10 with the antenna lines on the side. So that's a little thing I noticed about these two right away. The design is also a glass back, supports wireless charging, and it also has the aluminum feel just like the 8 Plus of last year. Now Apple claims that this phone basically fits more screen in about the same size body, but to me it actually feels slightly shorter than an iPhone 8 Plus and a little bit narrower. So it feels even more comfortable than an 8 Plus did. And you can see product red about the same when it comes to that shade of red on both of them. Although you did have a dual camera on the 8 Plus, you will have a single lens here that can still do portrait even with that single lens for the iPhone 10R. So thumbs up for the product red. They look so clean like Ferrari red. Okay, so the next reason why the iPhone 10R is a winner is because of the display. A lot of YouTubers and other journalists are failing to see the perspective of the target buyer or the target audience of the 10R bashing it for its display. That's why the 10S Max and the 10S Exist is for high-end buyers. This phone is not targeted at the high-end buyer. So for you know people to say that it's gonna be a terrible display for this size, I don't get it because this display is actually tuned very nicely and just like with any other type of market, like if you're buying cars, bicycles, clothes, everything there's a starting line and then there's a high-end line and this is just the starting point to get into these you know premium iphones the starting point but it's still good it's still a good phone it's just the starting point so the display is lcd it can also not burn in like you would see on oled and for those people who did like lcd technology before didn't like the pwm for some users that occurred with oled panels you might really still enjoy staying with a similar panel that your eyes are used to from prior iPhones you've had in the past, an iPhone 7, an iPhone 8, 8 Plus. You never went to the newer OLED panels from the iPhone 10 and above. So overall, I'm not actually terribly disappointed with the display so far. I have noticed that the bezels are quite thick, but that's only when you compare them next to an iPhone 10s. If you don't put a 10s or a 10s Max next to you, you're never gonna see that these bezels are that much thicker. So you would just have to be comparing them. You'll get used to this and you'll forget about that, but that does lead to it feeling a little bit like a cheaper phone, but still, this phone does not feel cheap whatsoever in the hand in the iPhone XR. It's just that the iPhone XS Max gives it a little bit more premium because of the bezels stretching closer to the edge, and that's because the OLED panels can bend. You can't bend an LCD panel the same way you can an OLED panel. Contrary to popular belief, I think it's actually a winner because of the display, because the display gives you better battery life. It gives you a similar you know, display quality you're used to already for the target person who's probably buying this, so your eyes will adjust easily to this panel. It's also very bright because it's LCD technology. That's a good thing. And it also has a bigger, larger canvas that is not that bad unless you're really holding it really close to your face when it comes to those pixels. The next reason why I think the iPhone XR is a winner is because of its weight. It's a pretty 
light phone for the size of the device. It's under 200 grams. I think once a phone gets over 200 grams, it starts to get a little bit heavy. This one right here is pretty light for the size. So I'm pretty happy with the weight of this device. It doesn't feel too heavy. I want to mention that the iPhone XR does give you some cool looking wallpapers you don't get on the iPhone XS series. Look at all these awesome wallpapers to match any color you get. The coral, the black, the blue. They got that little gray looking color right there. You have yellow, product reds color, and more. Look at these wallpapers. I mean, you could probably download them easily on third party, but to have them built right in the phone, I always like when I see new wallpapers for a device. And you don't get that like earth, like globe kind of wallpaper you get on the iPhone XS Max and the XS, but you do get these nice, unique wallpapers that are only for the XR. So that's a cool touch to have some new, unique wallpapers for this device. It kind of separates it a little bit. This phone's a winner because of the choice of colors. All the colors that do come with the iPhone XR give you a level of personalization that you're not gonna find on the more standard gold, silver, and black, basically space gray colors you get on the XS series. So more personalization brings this phone to a level that's more you. Yes, it's still Apple, so you still have iOS. Everybody's using iOS, so it's still that similar, but at least you get a color that matches your personality more so than ever before. I think they could have threw in a more pink color, that coral's kind of orange for the ladies, maybe a purple or something, but they got yellow there too if you like that, but still there's plenty of color selection here for the iPhone XR. Next reason it's a winner is the camera. So the camera is the same lens you're gonna find on the iPhone XS and XS Max. It also does something that not even the Google Pixel 3 does, and that's shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second. And if this video shoots anything like the XS Max, you're in for a huge treat with the 4K 60 here because the XS and XS Max shot amazing video in 4K. So I wouldn't expect no less here from the XR. You also get the same smart HDR feature that combines multiple exposures to give you a fantastic overall photo without you having to do much work. The software is about the same. You also have portrait mode here, something you might not have had if you had an iPhone 8 or 7 before it. I've noticed it has problems with object detection. So if you're looking for, you know, portraits with objects, you might not like the 10R square panel and all the other good stuff. But I don't want to talk too much about the iPhone 10R's camera. It shoots very fast. You can burst just like any iPhone before it, and it's basically the same experience. Check out these samples and let me know your thoughts on the iPhone XR. All right, so here's a sample of the 4K video quality coming from the iPhone XR. Let me go ahead, pan a little bit. It is a cloudy day, so it will do even better and better lighting. Let me go ahead and zoom in on these leaves to see kind of how it does with the zoom. Video looks very smooth so far. Let me know what you think of the audio quality though. Again, with the zoom, because we don't have the telephoto lens. All right, so here's a quick sample of the iPhone XR, the front-facing video quality and audio. I'm on the bike right now going about five miles per hour. Not a lot of shake as my bike's pretty smooth, but you can kind of see what the quality looks like, both audio and video. I think it's not bad. It's pretty close to the iPhone XS and XS Max, to be quite honest with you, which is pretty good for the price point of the XR. The next reason it's a winner is because of its battery life. Its battery life is reported to be the best battery life of any of the newer iPhones. I will put this to the test 
but it's even supposed to be better than the 8 plus which was my favorite battery life champ of last year and if that proves to be true this might be the phone for those people who want to go all day on their phone and not worry at all about hitting a charger the 10s max can do that as well however you definitely need to charge at nightly and lastly i want to address people saying that there's so much better phones on the market than the 10r that are competitive they're cheaper we're talking one plus six some xiaomi phones some huawei phones that are cheaper have better displays and all that well you can go on and on and on but what separates the iphone 10r from all of those phones is that it's ios it lasts much longer when it comes to software updates most of those phones are struggling to keep you updated for many years also seven nanometer chipset in here powerful more powerful than any other smartphone on the market so none of those phones have as long lasting of a chipset on the inside so the 10r is actually ahead of a lot of them internally you're just talking about some external features that are not the best maybe at the end of the day i find this product to be a win for both apple and consumers they're able to put out a product now that is going to please a lot of people who definitely never wanted to go even over 800 dollars for a smartphone and they can still maintain their profit margins by making some of these compromises. So for people to target this phone and talk all the crap and smack about what it doesn't offer, that's why the 10s exists. That's why the 10s Max exists. Put yourself in the perspective of the target buyer of this device. They don't need all of that. They don't want all of that. If they did, they would just buy that. So I think this is the best iPhone value that we have seen probably in a long time for Apple devices. And one I think that many users who do decide to take the plunge will easily forgive some of these compromises and to me, it's a winner. Let me know your thoughts down below. This is my first impressions. I got plenty more content coming your way. So leave your feedback, questions, comments, concerns on the iPhone 10R. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna be pleased if you pick one up regardless of all of the screen talk about it being less than 1080, that's the big one. It's a fantastic smartphone. Based on my initial use, I'm not seeing any difference